The latest 2.3 update has given Albedo a new and improved build, which not only lets him capitalize on what he's best at, but also shows just how much more powerful he is in certain teams. Albedo in 2.3 update has basically received a facelift when it comes to damage, thanks to the event exclusive Cinnabar Spindle Sword and the newly released Husk of Opulent Dreams artifact set, which both have massively improved upon his bloom damage, something that has been criticized by the community in the past due to Albedo's unique split scaling, where his elemental skill damage dependent on defense, while burst only scaled with attack, but it's honestly never been that much of an issue because his best selling point has always been how easy it is to build and get value out of him immediately, with great free-to-play options like Harbinger of Dawn and plenty of support artifact sets to choose from. But with that being said, this video mostly focuses on the new and improved Albedo when it comes to dealing damage. Now first thing that's important to know about him is how he should be used in your rotations and the type of tricks you can utilize when you're exploring and fighting with the Alchemist. Basically, Albedo can be described as a support damage dealer that best performs when he isn't on the field because one of his biggest strengths is how little time you need with him to get a lot of value. Also, as one of the advanced tricks you can do with his flower would be by utilizing the double bloom damage, which is when you trigger the bloom with him, then recast his skill and quickly attack the enemy again to score two bloom hits within few seconds. Normally, there is about two second delay without using this trick since that's how the skill works, but you can essentially reset this timer if you quickly recast the skill and trigger the bloom again. And as for the other tricks, you can use the flower to attack hard to reach enemies by holding down and aiming it, and even in places like Oceanit's Arena, where geo constructs cannot be used, you can still put it down on the ledges here and fight your enemies with bloom damage support. Finally, there is a reason why Klee considers Albedo like a brother, because he's also great at fish blasting. It's been repeated over and over again, but Albedo's biggest strength has to be the fact you can build him relatively cheap and the more you invest into him, the better the payoff will be. And now that Cinnabar Spindle is out, it has made him pretty busted when it comes to dealing absurd bloom damage, as you can see for yourself here when comparing it to Harbinger of Dawn and Primordial Jade Cutter, and it's not even at full strength because of the time-gated materials, but it will easily surpass them once it's fully refined, since that passive will go from 40% to 80% defense scaling, when we talk about his elemental skill. And if that's not enough, the subset itself gives 69% additional defense at level 90, but this also comes with the price of losing out on critical rate or damage that you could otherwise get from Jade Cutter or Harbinger, so you'll need to put a circle with critical rate on him to balance things out. But overall, this is Albedo's best in slot weapon, and with proper artifact and team management, thanks to this sword, you can easily produce 20k hits just from his elemental skill alone, and it gets even more ridiculous with the new artifact set that's been released. And as for the other weapon options, Harbinger of Dawn has been a staple weapon for almost a year now, and it kind of still is, especially if you miss out on the event and fail to obtain the spindle, but one thing you need to keep in mind is that his passive only works as long as his health is above 90%, which means you need to keep him out out of harm's way, and unfortunately, this will become unavoidable with corrosive damage, which is caused by the Rift Hounds, so you can basically say goodbye to this passive consistency when you're facing off against these puppies. Finally, there's also the Jade Cutter, but it's pretty much an overkill for him, because unless you're a whale, this weapon is utilized better on other sword users, although it does offer a comfortable crit rate and passive, and it's technically considered to be the best weapon for him if you use his burst a lot, but again, due to Cinnabar Spindle and its ability to make blooms hit hard, it's hard to suggest using this weapon when you could be using it instead on any other sword user. Now the whole thing with his previously mentioned split scaling is that generally, while his burst can be a good source of damage, it's far more easier to build around his elemental skill, which will periodically produce bloom damage, and with the new Cinnabar Spindle weapon and Husk artifact set, it's basically a no-brainer choice to just focus on maximizing on his defense instead. Now previously, the usual approach to his damage dealer build was Archaic Petra with either Noblesse Obliged to capitalize on his burst damage, or Defender's Will if you wanted to get bigger bloom numbers, and these sets are fine even now, but the new Husk of Opulent Dreams Artifact set is definitely the best choice if you decide to build him as a damage dealer. Of course, getting a full force set with great substats and main stats is easier said than done, so as a way to transition to it, you can go for double 2 set of Archaic Petra and Husk while you're working towards the force set bonus, as I'm sure this will take a lot of time in resin unless you have godlike luck. And to get a better understanding of why Husk's force set is 
so great. It basically has this curiosity mechanic where you can obtain a total of 4 stacks that translates over to 24% extra defense and geo damage, which is pretty insane. And the way you build it is by either keeping Albedo switched out, which then generates 1 stack every 3 seconds, or if he is on the field and deals geo damage, he will then gain 1 stack every 0.3 seconds. But the cool thing about it is that you can actually abuse the curiosity mechanic inside the abyss, since you can just stand around and wait for the stacks to build up while he's not even on the field, and you can then start the encounter with all 4 stacks. But that's his damage dealer sets. What if you don't have the resources or want to utilize him as a dedicated support instead? Well, there's basically three options you can go for. Noblesse Oblige force set if no one else in the team has it. Then there's Tenacity of Millilith force set, which can be maintained pretty easily thanks to his bloom damage. But the two set bonus is going to be useless for him. And finally, there's also Archaic Petra force set, although it's only recommended if you have one or two strong elemental damage dealers. And you can see yourself running around with Albedo and picking up the shards off the ground. Every Everything else that you need to know is shown here, things like substat priority and so on, although you will notice that while traditionally it's always critical rate or damage circlet that gets prioritized on damage dealers, defense main stat for Albedo specifically is actually a really decent option, thanks to the theory crafting that's been done, but you might as well call it Albedo circlet, unless of course Ito and Goro turn out to be good contenders for it as well. And regarding his energy recharge, well it really depends on his teammates, so I'll talk about this in the next part. Ultimately while it may feel overwhelming at first, it really comes down to your own personal preference and your luck with artifacts, but as an example, I burned about 3000 resin on the new domain, and this is what I ended up with. It's not perfect, there's a lot of room left for improvement, but the results are already clear just how well together the combination of Cinnabar Spindle and the new Husk Force set work on him. To get the best understanding about Albedo's potential in team building would be by taking a look at some of the metacoms that he has been used in over the past year. And first one that comes to mind is Hu Tao's popular Walnut team comp, where his passive skill plays a huge role of providing extra 125 elemental mastery after using the burst. And for Hu Tao, that first 100 elemental mastery is pretty crucial if you want to capitalize on her vape and melt reaction damage, which is why he's such a great teammate for her. Also, this is where energy recharge comes to mind mind, and he needs about 140% to keep the burst popping constantly if his teammate is Zhang Li, who will supply him with additional Geo Particles. Then there's also Xiao's team, which contrary to popular belief, doesn't rely that much on Albedo's fourth constellation, and the actual reason why he's so good for him is that it's easy to trigger his bloom damage with Xiao's wide plunging attacks, resulting in great overall performance. And speaking of damage, you definitely want to push him to level 90, because he will gain more defense, resulting in better damage you can pull off with these blooms. Now it's hard to talk about it at this point, but Mono Geo as of this moment is in its early stages and will more than likely become relevant once Ito and Goro come out thanks to Goro's whole design kit, working in similar way when compared to Benny or Kujo Sara, except he will be boosting everyone's defense and geo damage, which is basically what Albedo wants to capitalize on. Thankfully, at the time of making this video, Goro's hangout event reveals his entire kit and shows just how busted he is when using together with Albedo, with the new Initial numbers ranging somewhere between 25 to 35 percent overall bloom damage boost just from this general's burst. So it's inevitable mono geo teams that include Albedo and Goro are going to be amazing to say the least. Otherwise, the current mono geo team that kind of works is a combination like Noel, Albedo, and Ningguang. But keep in mind, out of all geo characters, Traveler and Ningguang are the best energy generators. And for someone like Noel, you definitely want to have at least one of them in your mono geo team. And finally, thanks to all the new toys he got with 2.3, he seriously works a lot better now as the only Geo character in any of the other teams, but if you want to burst with him consistently, then he still needs at least 140-160% to energy recharge due to how his blooms randomly generate the particles if you don't have his first constellation unlocked, but since Cinnabar Spindle is a thing, it's a lot more forgiving to maybe miss one of those bursts during his rotation, because the new and improved elemental skill damage makes up for it. Honestly, Mihoyo has done a great job at fleshing out his damage even further, so things have definitely changed after 2.3 update and his potential in team building has become quite clear to say the least. But let's quickly go over Albedo's constellations, because there's definitely
definitely been some misconceptions about them in the community. So the first constellation is basically almost useless if you use Albedo with a Mono Geo team, since there will be plenty of Geo particles flying around, but in any other team where he is the only Geo character, then it becomes extremely relevant and helps alleviate his sometimes problematic energy generation. However, when it comes to his second constellation, here's where a lot of complaints get shut down about his split scaling, because this constellation essentially will inject defense into his burst through the special new mechanic, but it's definitely not as serious as something like Raiden's second constellation, although it will provide a huge bump to his burst damage. And as you probably already know, C4 isn't the main reason he gets used in Xiao's team, so this is an absolutely niche and completely useless constellation by itself if no one is plunging around. And the final 6th constellation only boosts the active character who has crystallized shield, so more or less it's going to be beneficial for teammates with most field time. Overall, none of the constellations feel like they are mandatory to take advantage of everything he has to offer, and they are just there to boost his damage numbers, but at C0 with the new weapon and artifact set, he feels like a complete package. With everything that has been said in the video so far, you might be feeling overwhelmed with the amount of info that's been thrown at you, so the takeaway message I want to leave you with about this Albedo video is that he used to be great but now he's even better thanks to a combination of things like Cinnabar Spindle amping up his elemental skill damage, new Husk of Opulent Dreams artifact set making him into an even stronger sub damage dealer, and the fact more Geo characters will be coming out that will easily synergize with him, not to mention even the newly introduced Yun G might be a relevant teammate for him in the future. So I hope this video gave you a good enough understanding of how to best utilize him. Thanks for watching and see you soon.